TMZ TV. If you have not seen part one of Antioch, with standing Peter to his face by Paul of Tarsus. Watch yesterday's show. That will bring you up to speed. Paul has arrived in Antioch with some of the Greeks. This is at the wedding of Simeon. And this is one of the greatest events to me of the apostolic days when the truth of the evangel in the minds of the Greeks was at stake. Paul takes a strong stand to withstand the chief apostle when he plays the hypocrite in Antioch. So here we go. Antioch, withstanding Peter to his face. Part 2 by Paul of Tarsus. They all stood, the Greeks. Like me at first, they all wanted to touch him, but they dared not. None of them did at first, but they could not take their eyes from him. Their only world now was Peter. I had practically disappeared from them. This was the chief. This man had touched the soft hand of God. He had walked on water, this man. They rose to greet him, even the women. I saw the tears ready to break over Peter's eyes. This was all that I'd hoped for. I saw the dam begin to break. They saw it too, and when they did, it became obvious. I thanked God all over again for Joppa. God lowering the simple sheet filled with unclean animals. It did everything. Such a divine strike at such an hour. Without it, nothing. Even Peter admitted that. Because of that, everything humbled him now. After the denials, he thought he could go no lower. But then, that. Anything was possible now. Peter said that he needed that vision in Joppa. He acknowledged that without it, he would have been no use to me. I knew that. Peter said it glowed like the sun, the sheet. I said to him, I can relate to that. The vision, a minute's duration, prepared him for Cornelius of Caesarea directly, but for me, down that same road. And now I knew ultimately for this. I had been a killer fresh from Damascus, practically the killer of Christ to them and even to him. None of them wanted me then, except perhaps for dead. It took Barnabas to approach Peter. I had dreaded it, but God's timing never fails. I waited outside until Barnabas gave me the signal, a simple pull of the hand. I came in through the shadows, creeping like a monk. I trembled to even enter that day. Without Barnabas, I'd have been dead, killed by stealth or otherwise. Without the vision given to Peter, my demise would have become symbolic, but no less an absence of life. And yet, that day, the chief of the apostles granted me, the butcher of Damascus, the right hand of fellowship. I shook the great man's hand, and now he extended the same hand and both of his arms to Sosipater, to Agatha, to Adelphius, to Coes, to Seleucus, to Polyus, Alexis, Cassandra, and Narcissus, to Persis, to Iros, to Helen, Rhoda, and Tros. It was now the tears flowing from my own eyes that obscured this vision. Thank you, my Lord. Chala, barley bread, fava beans, leeks, garlic, onions on a platter, figs, grape honey dripping over the pomegranates, dates, sycamore figs on the meat plate, fat-tailed sheep, gazelle, deer stew, rib of lamb, the wine table overflowing, falafel, takina, tabula, jandali, we ate. Peter was gnawing on a generous bread chunk, chasing it with hearty swallows of his wine, 
saying something pithy, no doubt, to Rhoda of Cyprus, when it happened. The circumcision had arrived. God. They did not arrive, they entered. These were believers in Jesus' mind, but zealous for the law. This was the trick of them and the thick of them. These were the big shots. None of them fully trusted me. I was teaching apostasy from Moses, they said. They knew the resurrected Jesus, but they did not know my Christ. I recognized Azrael, Barak, Giannis, and Canaan. I may have known a fifth man, Pesach. They entered with authority so that everyone stopped to assimilate the quiet pageantry. It was a moment ripe with childlike agitation. There were nine of them, more than mere guests. This was the Jerusalem contingent. They were from James. Everyone knew James, the literal brother of Jesus. Their presence had been anticipated. Peter, Andrew, and John were already among us, yes. But these three men were living letters of the humility of Christ. Not so the contingent. The men at the door paled in importance before Peter, Andrew, and John. Yet, they presumed to be something. And this carried weight with impressionable ones. And the weight blew with the wind from the open window across the wooden hall. Even the Antiochians knew that something slightly more than human had come. The men wore preponderance like so many sashes across their chests. The stewards rushed to seat them. Here was the chance to restart our eating, and we did. But not Peter. No, not him. I saw it happen. Damn it, I watched it happen. He got up to stretch. He quote, needed to stretch, he said. And he needed to get some more lamb, he said. So stretch, I thought to myself. Go get some more lamb, dumb ox. I already knew what would happen. His rising from his chair was too instantaneous. There was no gradual realization for Peter that either the stretch or the lamb was called for. Had he caught one of them looking at him? But of course, everyone looked at him. I would wait it out, but I found while waiting it out that I could not take another morsel. I watched Peter's every move. Perhaps I would do nothing. God help me to do nothing. <laughs>